Good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Adrian. I'm a ZK researcher, and I've been working on folding for the last few months. Now, um, I know it's been a long day with lots of math, so I wanted to keep things a bit light and focus on building up your visual intuition for what folding is. Uh, now, I want to note that this is going to apply mainly to the Nova, Sangria, and Protostar lines of work, though I don't expect anybody to have read the papers before. Um, and so, like, yeah, with any good ZK analogy, we obviously need a, a, a very contrived real-world example. So if you'll allow, let's take to the sea as we explore Folding Island. Now, the situation is as follows. We've got, on Folding Island, there's like this very special fruit that grows on the shore. And this fruit is rare, and uh, because it's on an island, it's not exactly easy to get to. But fortunately, we've got a, a, a prover who knows how to get there, and he picks the fruits, and he brings them back to mainland, and he sells them to a verifier. Obviously, uh, the verifier does, doesn't really trust the prover, so he wants to make sure the fruit he's getting is actually from this island, and it's not some counterfeit fruit or some old fruit or so. So he, for extra assurance, he asks the prover to tell him the exact GPS coordinates of where he landed on this island. But this, if the verifier actually wanted to check this, uh, this would be not really practical since the verifier would actually have to um, visit the island. And uh, if they're going there anyway, they might as well just pick the fruit themselves and cut the middleman, right? And this makes even less sense when um, and the verifier is placing many orders because uh, like, you don't want to be checking it at every time. So like, we want to try and come up with a better system for these two parties to interact so that everybody's happy at the end. So we're going to come up with this folding-like technique, which is going to make things more efficient uh, for the verifier and with only a little bit of extra work for the prover. So this is the situation. On the left here, we've got uh, the prover's perspective. Um, he actually goes to the island, so he sees it in all its glory, and including the elevation. And the verifier knows that this fruit grows on, a specific, on an island with a very specific shape, but he only has a 2D view of it. Um, so just to be clear, we're interested here in like, the elevation of the island and the shoreline. So on the first delivery, the prover is going to get to the island, and he lands at a specific point P0. Now he's going to note these coordinates. He's also going to pick his fruit. And then he sails back to the mainland, sells the fruit to the verifier, and gives him the coordinates. Now one thing to note is that because he landed on the shore, well, we expect the elevation of this point to be 0. So the verifier just writes it down, and he's able to map the point on his 2D map. Now for the second um, uh, visit, the prover arrives at another point P1. And again, because it's a sea level, we expect this, uh, the elevation to be zero, right? So he, 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 he notes it down, he picks up the fruit, but he's going to do a little something extra. Because what he wants to do is he wants to convey to the verifier that he's actually visited the island. And he's not just like repurposing some old fruit or, or selling whatever else. So what can he do? Right now, the information we have, we have P1 and P0. What the prover's going to do is he's going to draw a straight line between P1 and P0. The verifier is also able to do this because they've got the 2D map. And the prover is just going to walk from P1 to P0 and record his elevation along the way. Now, fortunately, the prover is like, in really good shape. So this kind of hike doesn't really bother him, even though well, it's not really <laughs> a nice hike, I guess. Um, but keep in mind that this is way less work than having the verifier actually come to the island. So this is acceptable for the prover to do. And so along the way, he's going to record the elevation. And when he gets back to mainland, he's going to give the verifier, uh, well, the fruit, uh, the new landing corners to P1, as well as his elevation map that he, 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 he created while he was uh, there. Now, obviously, the verifier doesn't trust anything that the prover is giving him. But we, he can check one thing. He's going to check that, at least on this elevation map, uh, that both P1 and P0 are indeed at elevation 0, right? And in this situation, well, this is a really nice situation to be in because what we've just done is that we've forced the prover to actually convey to the verifier that he visited the island. And we forced the prover to be right about the elevation at every single point between P1 and P0 and not just the elevations at P0 and P1. So this is a nice situation to be in, the, in cryptography because we just forced the prover to be right in several places. In, and so what the verifier is going to do is he's going to say, OK, well, I'm just going to check this elevation map in a single point. So we do the classic thing. He samples a random point alpha, or rather a random scalar alpha between 0 and 1. And this is going to define a, a random midpoint between P0 and P1. What the math is saying here is just that 
P1 prime is like alpha percent away from P1 in the direction of P0. Now, uh, because the, the verifier is able to compute this point P1 prime by himself because he's just looking at the map and drawing a line, computing the percentage, etc., and he's going to use the prover's elevation map to compute the claimed elevation of P1 prime on this map. And because the elevation map already contains the information about the elevation of P0 and P1, and we're just checking that the elevation map is correct, well, he can actually forget about P0 and P1 and just focus on P1 prime. Now, just to recap from the purest perspective again, so he's walked from P1 to P0 with this elevation map, the verify assembled a random alpha, this defines a new random point P1 prime, the elevation is given like this on the island, and we can forget about the two previous points because what we really care about now is testing this elevation map. And so we've reduced our problem from checking two different landing coordinates to only checking the elevation of a single point on the island. And if the prover was wrong at any point, uh, whether uh, he was wrong about, or he was lying about his landing coordinates P0 and P1, or he gave the wrong elevation map, then with really high probability, uh, the elevation at, of P1 prime would be wrong. But we're gonna continue. The prover is going to get back to the island for a third order, and he arrives now at this new landing point, P2. Now, again, he's going to record the coordinates, pick up some fruit, and again, he's going to draw a straight line to where. Well, the only coordinates that are remembered at this point is P1 prime because we forgot about the other ones. So he's just going to draw that, and again, he's going to walk there, do a little hike. This time it looks like this, a bit more, a bit more of an elevation, but again, he's in good shape. And he does this, he sails back to mainland, and again, he delivers to the prover, uh, to the verifier, the fruits, the new coordinate P2, as well as a new elevation map. And just as before, the verifier is gonna check on this elevation map that with both points that he has and the claimed elevations, these match up with the elevation map. So now we've, again, reduced our problem of checking just the elevation map, and we can ignore the two uh, previous points. Um, or, well, not yet, because we still first have to sample a random midpoint using another challenge alpha. This defines, again, a new point P2 prime. And, again, the verifier just needs to look at the elevation map, which is not trusted at this point, but it allows the verifier to at least check the elevation, uh, obtain the elevation of a random point on this island. And so, again, this is from the brewer's perspective. We've got the elevation map drawn here, a new random point P2 prime is sampled and we compute the elevation like this. Now, this is really nice, because now we've had three visits, and we're left with only one point to check with one elevation. And the way we've constructed this is that we've iterated our checks one above on top of the other. And by only checking the elevation of P2 prime here, well, we're able, by checking just this point, to verify and confirm with very high probability that the elevations of all three landings were correct. If the prover was, on the, if, if he was wrong at any point, whether he gave wrong landing coordinates or wrong elevation maps, then the elevation of P2 prime would be wrong. And so this is really nice. The verifier would only have to come to the island once, check one single point, and he'd make sure that like everything that was done by the prover before this was correct. Now, so you may wonder, how does that, this actually relate to snarks? Um, so now, our analogy, um, this island here was actually defined by a polynomial. And this polynomial, you give it a co two co uh, coordinates, x and y, and for any point on this island, it will spit out uh, the elevation you're at. Now, um, this is just like in a snark, where like gates are these polynomial equations. And the reason why we're interested in the shore is that these are the points where the equation um, equals zero. So we're interested in the valid witness points. And in this example, like you had P1 and P0, which were both on the shore, and uh, trust me, but these would <laughs> evaluate to zero at this place. And just as we can draw a line between two points uh, on the map, we can actually do the same thing with uh, witness coordinates uh, by simply interpolating between the two. This defines a linear polynomial. Uh, it's a line which uh, maps between the two, which passes between the two points. Now, the elevation map is what's sometimes referred to in, the, in these papers as the error polynomial or the slack polynomial, and it's simply obtained by evaluating the elevation over all the points in the line. So we just need to plug in our equation for our line into 
the gate equation or our island equation, and that will give us a polynomial that defines the elevation between P0 and P1. And because it's a polynomial, its degree is actually the same one as G. Well, we only need to sample it at degree G plus one points. And we, knowing that we already have two uh, evaluations, which are the evaluations at zero, which should give the, the elevation of P0, and the uh, ele uh, evaluation at one, which should give the elevation at uh, one, uh, P1, which is also zero. And so when the prover comes back with a map, he actually comes back with a couple of points sampled from this polynomial. And when the verifier has sampled their random challenge alpha, well, they're able to interpolate this polynomial and obtain the evaluation of uh, the elevation map or the error polynomial. And so just to bring things back a bit more to snarks, um, if we have a more realistic case, uh, a multiplication gate, for example, which takes three coordinates x, y, and z, um, in this case, we ch uh, valid witness is considered a triple x, y, and z such that z is equal to x times y. And the error polynomial here is just equal to the composition of the thing I detailed before. So you take the linear interpolation between the two witness points w0 and w1 and plug that into your gate equation. And this gives a complicated polynomial, but it's still easy to evaluate. And you only need to evaluate it in three points to get the full uh, polynomial. Now, I know I glossed over a lot of stuff, <laughs> but I hope I was able to um, expand your intuition on Protostar. And if you have any more questions, I'd be happy to talk about it more. And yeah, thank you for having me. Have a good day.